This company wants to prove that Uber and Lyft's pricing structure is unfair. What some drivers wish they knew before they signed up for these apps. A Lyft driver recalls a terrifying ride with a mental patient. It's This Week in Rideshare News. Hey, what's up guys? It's Cecily and I'm from Drive Pro Drive and I'm reporting today for This Week in Rideshare News. A Lyft driver shares a horrible tale with an encounter he had with a mental patient last week. The driver stated that he received a request from a hospital and that a nurse escorted a patient out to the car. He said as he drove, he realized that the rider was talking to himself and answering. He said that he was terrified and he did not want to engage the rider because he wasn't sure if the guy would get angry or whatnot. He was commissioned to carry the guy from Richmond to Newport News, which is about an 80 mile ride and he said he was terrified the whole time there should be a few questions on that app hey are you an employee is this person a passenger if they're a passenger is this person a risk to himself or others he also mentioned that it was a scheduled ride and did not understand why the nurse or anyone anyone at the hospital didn't explain to him that this guy was a mental patient now HIPAA privacy laws actually protect patients and prevent people from sharing your medical history. That's why the hospital didn't share this man's condition with the driver. However, the driver did feel that he should have been given the opportunity if this person was ill or needing some sort of psychiatric care that he should have gotten the opportunity to make that choice. My question for you guys is what would you do in this situation? If you were picking up a patient at a facility, a hospital or whatnot, and was commissioned to take them to somewhere else and that person started talking to themselves, what would you do? It'd be easy to make fun of this and that sort of thing, but this is a kind of question I think that many people may have to deal with. And we need to have some things in place in case you are with someone who is not functioning mentally at their capacity and what will you do to stay safe um, to make sure that nothing bad happens to you. How about that? Transportation website Jalopnik thinks that Uber and Lyft's surge pricing is unfair and they need your help to prove it. The media outlet is requesting rideshare drivers to upload their fare receipts in an effort to investigate what they believe to be an unfair pricing structure. Using a quick form, drivers can upload receipts Drivers can anonymously submit fares, including how much the rider paid, how much the driver got paid, and how much the company pocketed. If you're interested in contributing, go to fares.jalopnik.com, and if you're curious about privacy, they have a link for that as well. The Business Insider is reporting what drivers wish they knew before they signed up for the apps. I know that this is a topic that's probably more so for newbies, but I'm sure that the OGs will get a kick out of it, and hopefully you guys will contribute the things that you wish you knew as well. The first being, vehicle damage can add up very quickly. Riders will take their time. Figuring out a schedule that works for you. Know your numbers. Knowing cost per ride is very effective. Going to the restroom ain't always easy. Taxes can get complicated. It's a lonely job. And not all riders know the rules, nor do they care. If you guys have some things to add to this list, please leave those in the comments. Mind you, no one's ever going to call you and give you their debit card information and pretend to be from these companies. If that conversation happens, just hang up the phone and don't deal with those people. But on the flip, riders are getting in cars and asking to use your phone and putting their debit card information in there and cashing out to themselves. And in some cases, you may get your money back. In some cases, you may not. And so I would strongly suggest if anybody talks to you about putting in their debit card information, it's a flat out no. Hang up the phone. It's a done deal. If anybody asks to use your phone while in your car, you need to say, you need to politely decline. And or if you want to you need to call somebody or something like that, then you need to put that person, make the call, put it on speaker or just say you can't do it at all. I would probably opt to not do it at all because it just prolongs the whole time, the ride and everything. And it's like, how did you call me in the first place? And if you need to charge your phone, I can charge it for you. Otherwise, I can't help you. You should have figured that out on your own. 
let me know what your thoughts are in the comments um i don't know if you guys have seen this video but it's remarkable to me that she would actually put this guy's debit card information into her app and cash out i don't know my final story is more of a highlight of something that happened to another driver this past week i saw a video where a driver was scammed by a passenger the passenger pretended to be Lyft, called her and basically said that she won a hundred dollars and then he talked her into putting his debit card information into her Lyft app and then she transferred all her money to him. I'm not sure why she did that but that video is here below. And I think most of the people watching here would probably agree that that's not something that you would fall for. However, when you are in desperate need of money and you are trying to hit a goal, your boundaries might be a little bit more pliable than not. And also I wanted to highlight that there are a ton of cash out scams going on across the country, not only with potential, um, you know writers who are pretending to be uber and lyft officials mind you no one's ever going to call you and give you their debit card information and pretend to be from these companies if that conversation happens just hang up the phone and don't deal with those people but on the flip writers are getting in cars and asking to use your phone and putting their debit card information in there and cashing out to themselves and in some cases you may get your money back in some cases you may not and so I would strongly suggest if anybody talks to you about putting in their debit card information it's a flat out no hang up the phone it's a done deal if anybody asks to use your phone while in your car you need to say you need to politely decline and or if you want to need to call somebody or something like that then you need to put that person make the call put it on speaker or just say you can't do it at all. I would probably opt to not do it at all because it just prolongs the whole time, the ride and everything. And it's like, how did you call me in the first place? And if you need to charge your phone, I can charge it for you. Otherwise, I can't help you. You should have figured that out on your own. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this video, but it's just, it's really remar remarkable that she would give away that she it was remarkable to me that she would actually put this guy's debit card information into her app and cash out thinking that she was going to get an additional four hundred dollars i don't know all right so the writer was talking to himself and answering he said that he was terrified and he did not want to engage the writer because he wasn't sure if the guy would get angry or whatnot he was commissioned to carry the guy from richmond to newport news which is about an 80 mile ride and he said he was terrified the whole time he also mentioned that it was a scheduled ride and did not understand why the nurse or anyone anyone at the hospital didn't explain to him that this guy was a mental patient. Now HIPAA privacy laws actually protect patients and prevent people from sharing your medical history with other people. That's why the hospital didn't share this man's condition with the driver. However, the driver did feel that he should have been given the opportunity if this person was ill or needing some sort of psychiatric care that he should have gotten the opportunity to make that choice. Um, my question for you guys is what would you do in this situation if you were picking up a patient at a facility a hospital or whatnot and was commissioned to take them to somewhere else and that person started talking to themselves what would you do um it'd be e easy to make fun of this and that sort of thing but this is a kind of question i think that many people will um may have to deal with and we need to know we need to have some things in place in case you are with someone who is not functioning mentally at their capacity and what will you do to stay safe and what can you do um, to make sure that you don't 
nothing bad happens to you. How about that? <laughs> Trying to be politically correct. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. That's all I have this week. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, please do so. There are a lot of tips and resources that Harry has to offer you. Um, if you're curious about me, who I am, my name is Cecily, and my channel is called Drive Go Drive. And you can find me on Facebook and on YouTube. I have my own YouTube channel there as well. And as always, have a safe week. Talk to you soon. Bye.